Hi guys, so today I just wanted to take you through six different ways in which adopting a more minimalist lifestyle has helped me to achieve my financial goals. If this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, do check out some of my other stuff. I make videos about personal finance, getting out of debt, beginners investing, and generally just bossing life. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So I guess the first thing to say is that minimalism means different things to different people. So what it might mean to you might not be what it means for me. So you have one end where you have the more sort of extreme minimalism where people genuinely live with no furniture and no belongings and as much as I would like to do that because of the environmental impacts and everything like that, I just couldn't do that. So. I do what I can and I'm by no means someone who has no stuff at all but I've been on this minimalism journey for a while in terms of adopting that mindset in everything I do and I have a lot of stuff, I do, like I don't try to hide that but as time goes on I'm trying to remove a lot of the stuff and, and essentially not buy more stuff so that leads me nicely into the first way that minimalism has helped me achieve my financial goals and that is stopping impulse spending. This was always one of my biggest downfalls. So for me, impulse spending was just, it was almost a hobby. <laughs> um, every time I was stressed or I felt down, I would shop and it, it wasn't necessarily like huge amounts, but it was always something. I was always buying a new top or a new dress or a new something and that's kind of how I've accumulated so much stuff and really sort of thinking before I buy something, making myself wait a few days before I buy something and making sure that in those few days I consider do I really need this or do I really want it so you know I'm although I'm trying to achieve all these financial goals and just generally live like a more frugal lifestyle and minimalist lifestyle, I by no means tell myself I can't have things that I genuinely really want. So, you know, that's not the kind of thing that would make me happy and that it wouldn't make me stay consistent with my goals. So, but just generally adopting this approach of like really waiting to see whether it's something I really need or really, really, really want has helped me reduce my impulse shopping by like 90%. I'm not even kidding. I haven't done an impulse purchase for a really long time. Like I can't even remember the last time I did an impulse purchase. So I bought some new clothes uh, back in February when I got a new job and I bought four things last week because I'm going on holiday at the end of this week to see my family and I just needed a couple of things before I went. But that's about it. Whereas usually every single month I would be buying new clothes. So yeah, that's massively helped decrease the amount of money that I spend. The second way is through selling stuff. So as I mentioned before, bit by bit, I'm trying to declutter things. So as I do that, I'm either selling or donating stuff and obviously that increases my income. So every time I sell something, I'm getting extra income. I've mentioned in one of my previous videos, I think it was my passive income report for July, that for example, that month I had sold a UV nail lamp that I just didn't need and wasn't really using. So actually getting rid of that lamp and all the nail varnishes and things that went with it has cleared up a whole shelf drawer thing in my nightstand. I'm trying not to take on too much at once. I've got heaps of clothes that I'm actually planning to sell, but because I find the whole process quite stressful, I'm just doing like one thing at a time. So I'm listing one thing, once it sells, I'm listing another, and then just taking it through that kind of process. But yeah, just as I'm decluttering and thinking, do I need this? Do I want this? Do I even wear it? Almost like a Marie Kondo approach, if you will, if you've, if you've watched that on Netflix. And yeah, so that's kind of increasing my income, which again is consistent with my financial goals. Now the third way that adopting minimalism has helped me is probably one that you wouldn't think of straight away when you when you think about these things but it's actually decluttering my mind. So I'm one of those people where if my the area around me is messy I struggle to concentrate, I constantly procrastinate and I've just found that my productivity goes up so much when things around me are clean and tidy and not cluttered and through this whole process of having less 
stuff and getting rid of stuff, it makes it easier to keep things clean and tidy. I'm by no means where I want to be, but I have noticed that when I'm getting rid of stuff and reducing stuff, my mind is clearer and it helps me focus on both my day job, which brings me money, and on my side hustles, which also bring me money. So through that, it's like a bit of a sideways step into how it indirectly, but sort of directly, um, helps me with my goals. So the fourth way that minimalism has helped me achieve my financial goals is generally just needing less stuff. Now, this kind of ties into shopping less and selling stuff but but it also ties in into the long term in terms of for example with clothes i've mentioned i think in one of my really early videos that i wanted to aim for something like a capsule wardrobe and what i've said now is that when i buy new clothes i want them all to be sort of white black gray and pastel colors anything new that i buy will not be bright and colorful unless it's for a very special or specific reason or something but having that kind of wardrobe will mean that long term i will need even less stuff and less outfits because i can't be like well this doesn't go with this and this doesn't go with that so you know eventually once i reach that i will document it because i know some people said they'd be really interested in seeing that but i'm not quite there yet because i still have so many clothes that are perfectly fine to wear and i'm not getting rid of because i don't see the point of getting rid of these clothes and then buying new ones when obviously i won't make back the full amount even if i manage to sell this stuff in order to buy new clothes so as they get worn out and i stop wearing them i'll sort of recycle them out and then bring in new clothes when I need them. But just to give you another example which is not necessarily shopping related, this kind of needing less stuff attitude also applies to other things in my life. So as an example, I have a Spotify subscription at the moment for free. So I've got premium Spotify for six months for free because of a purchase that I made which came with six months free Spotify. Adopting this attitude of like, do I really need it? I've decided that when it runs out, I'm not going to renew it. Because as much as I like listening to the music when I'm commuting and things like that, um, I mean, at the moment I'm not even commuting, but even if I go back to the office, I've decided that on my commute, I should probably be listening to podcasts or reading books. And I really need to bring myself to do it. And actually saving 120 pound a year on a Spotify subscription is probably a good thing to help me reach my financial goals so it's it's little things like that where deciding that you don't actually need something can help you the fifth way that this has helped me is through decluttering my finances so this comes more in the territory of do i need this many credit cards do i need this many subscriptions to things sort of looking through all my direct debits and going what am i paying this for what is this do i need this and then just deciding is this going to make me happy is it something that is necessary for me so i still have things i pay for i pay for subscriptions for my channel for example but as i mentioned before with things like spotify for example it's a case of do i really need it with things like like at the moment i've got netflix amazon video and apple tv <laughs> There is no way I need all three. I'm very lucky because I don't pay for any of them at the moment, but a time is going to come where I'm going to have to pay. And when that time comes, I'm going to pick one. I'm not going to be paying for all three. So it's, it's adopting that kind of mindset when it comes to your finances. It just makes it easier to keep track of things and really stick to your financial goals. And the final way in which minimalism has helped me with my financial goals is not succumbing to lifestyle inflation. So what that means is that when I've been promoted, I've just had the understanding that I'm fine with the level of life that I have. I don't need to, I don't know, buy more expensive food now or get myself a car now or, you know, all this kind of stuff that would come with an increase in salary because I'm quite happy with my level of li like living. So why would I let my expenses creep up just because my salary has gone up? So it's increasing the difference between your income and your expenses and putting the difference into your debt or your savings. So that's been a massive help since I've got the promotion that I've just been piling it all into all my sort of debts and stuff and, and things like that. So that's been an absolute godsend. On that note, I'm gonna stop talking. I hope that was useful and I hope it inspires you to adopt at least a little bit of a minimalist approach 
to life. I wanted to show you that having these mindsets doesn't mean that you have to have no furniture and sleep on the floor and have that sort of more extreme view of minimalism. That actually you can adopt all these principles which fall under minimalism and have it help you in many ways. Like for example, the decluttering thing that I said, I think a lot of people probably wouldn't think of that as a benefit. Anyway, thanks for watching as always and see you in the next video, bye. Yeah, so I'm missing to see that